Dave. Thank you for coming and talking to me today about your work on the Isle of Mull. I'm really looking forward to hearing everything you've got to say. So could you just start us off by introducing yourself and your, your job? Hello, my name's Dave Sexton. I work for the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds in Scotland. I've been based on Mull as their Mull officer uh, since 2003. And um, my job really is, the main part of the job at least, is to monitor the population of breeding white-tailed eagles and some of the wintering and immature birds as well. So we've got 22 pairs of them here. So there's a lot of ground to cover, 300 miles of coastline on Mull. Um, so that's the main part of the job. But also I get involved with running the Mull Eagle Watch project, which is a public viewing scheme where we take members of the public when we can to see an active nest and also then get involved in other species like golden eagle and corn crakes as well which uh, places like Iona is very important for. Uh, currently, what are the main threats to birds such as white-tailed eagles and golden eagles? And what has been done to protect these birds at the moment on the Isle of Mull? Well, I think we're really lucky on Mull. There are not really many threats to sea eagles and golden eagles on Mull. The threats come for them when they leave a place like Mull. Generally, the view of eagles here is positive, but unfortunately, when young birds, for instance, leave their natal site and start exploring Scotland, as they do, they're going to usually head east. And there they might well come across places such as intensively managed driven grouse moors. And we know from a lot of satellite tag data that eagles of both species are lost on those sorts of estates and intensively managed moors. They're shot, they're poisoned. And so that is probably one of their, their main threats. And young eagles, young sea eagles, spend their first three or four years drifting around and wandering with no fixed abode, really. They can turn up pretty much anywhere. And we know a lot of birds are lost as a result of coming into contact with estates that are so intent on, on raising grouse that they don't really tolerate any predators whatsoever. That's why the Scottish government is now looking seriously at bringing in licensing to, to manage those estates better so that they actually comply with the law, which is a, a good thing generally. So when white-tailed eagles first came back to Mull, they were released up on the Isle of Rum, just to the north of here. They've never actually been released here. People often think they were, but they, they made their way here from the various release sites around Scotland, of which there's actually been three over the, over the last few decades. But the birds first appeared on Mull in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Amazingly, even then, and right up through the 90s, egg collecting was still quite a, a big deal and a big threat for them. Thankfully, it has declined a lot now. There's big penalties, prison sentences, fines, and a lot of the compulsive um, egg collectors um, have gone away. But we're never complacent, and it is always a possible threat. But certainly back in the early days, egg collecting uh, was the big issue. And so um, Strathclyde Police in those days, or Police Scotland now, formed a project called Mull Eagle Watch, which RSPB and the Mull Anionia Community Trust, Forestry Commission, or Forestry and Land Scotland as they are now, um, and Scottish Natural Heritage, or Nature Scotland as they are now, all came together to form a partnership which would protect the eagles. And they formed a like a massive wildlife neighbourhood watch, which involved all the local community to get involved in just keeping an eye out for suspicious characters, suspicious looking cars parked in places that they wouldn't normally park, folk walking along the lanes at night with ropes, all sorts of things came to light. Um, and it was usually the local community and the farmers who were out and about all the time and spotted these characters. And quite a few were apprehended over the years mostly during the 1990s. They tried all sorts of disguises and ways of getting in. They were pretending to be BBC Natural History Unit researchers and asking in local bars where the sea eagles were and that sort of thing. I mean, they gave the game away because very quickly the locals got suspicious and uh, identified them. Farmers too played a huge part in, in helping to apprehend some of these characters. So that was the main project then and the main issue. And that's how Mull Eagle Watch 
was formed. But Mali Eagle Watch then kind of transformed and evolved into a public viewing project as the threat started to decline uh, and more and more people were coming to Mull to see sea eagles as part of their holiday and bringing a lot of money into the local community and economy. We had to evolve into finding a way to satisfy this need and this desire to see sea eagles in the wild. And so there were one or two nests which presented themselves very obviously and were very visible. And with care and being responsible, we were able to set up a, a distant viewing area. And so Mull Eagle Watch then became more of a, a public viewing project. We've still got the, the, the Police Scotland signs, which go up every year, just to warn people that these birds are protected. They've got the highest level of protection of any bird in the UK. Big fines for willfully disturbing them at the nest. So, yeah, we, we never get complacent on that, and we're on alert at this time of year, every year. Nowadays, Mull Eagle Watch is more about people enjoying eagles and seeing them in their natural habitat. So how can forests help support eagles in Scotland? So what the Future Forest Company is doing is absolutely fantastic and phenomenal. And I wish there was more and more of it, both on Mull and around Scotland, because they're really restoring the ecology of the area. There's a lot of talk of rewilding, which is a term that offends some people, upsets others, excites others. But I think ecological restoration is, is a better term, really. And it's trying to turn back the clock a bit to a, an era when this land would have had much more extensive woodland cover, which has been cleared over the centuries for livestock grazing and in the past for sports shooting and, and all sorts of other things that have gone on over the last century or two. But now to have more trees back where they should be, whether it's through careful planting in the right places or natural regeneration can only be a good thing. And for the eagles, it's just perfect, really, because it's not going to be like, you know, tightly planted trees where birds like eagles with massive wingspans can't fly between. It's going to be a natural looking or natural appearing woodland that species like the golden eagle and white tailed eagle will easily hunt in. It'll provide cover for their prey species. So for golden eagle, it'll be things like mountain hare or, or the mull hare that we have here, as well as potentially in the future, woodland grouse might come back, like black grouse, which mull used to have. You look at the old game books for some of the estates, and it's full of what a great day shoot they had for black grouse. There are now no black grouse here, probably for other reasons, but shooting them all probably didn't help. But to have good natural woodland back would be wonderful to get black grouse. They're not too far away. They're just over on Ardna Merkin and a few on Morven. They might find their own way here. But also these trees, as they grow, they're not all going to be massive big trees. They can provide nest sites as well. We know golden eagles, although they prefer rocky crags perhaps to nest on, they'll also nest in trees. And certainly most of the white-tailed eagles on Mull are nesting in trees. Some of them not all that big. You think they're going to choose the biggest tree around, but we've got nests in little birches about eight foot off the ground. So the sort of work that Future Forest Company is planning over the next decade, 100 years, 400 years, who knows, it's a big vision they'll have. It can only be good for eagles. Fantastic, thank you. So it's so, okay, so you've spotted white-tailed eagles on the Glenaross estate. So could you just tell us a bit about what you've seen so far with these birds? So Glenaross estate has historically always been very important for white-tailed eagles. It's ha It has golden eagles as well, but the white-tailed eagles, when they first came back here in the late 70s, early 80s, um, spent a lot of time around that area. Nowadays, there is a pair of white-tailed eagles. They don't as yet nest on Glenaross estate, but they're only just off it. They're a slightly odd pair, I have to say, in that they've never produced a chick in all their many decades of trying. And we don't really know why. We're pretty sure from the footage that we've had, and Glen Arras Estate have done some trail cam footage, and we've seen the birds quite close on other occasions. We're pretty sure the male is uh, from 1994 a mull bird, so really getting on in age now. He used to have yellow wing tags with a with a zero on it. He's lost most of those wing tags now. A lot of them over the years, they eventually fall off. But he still, last time I saw him, he had a little stub of yellow on the underside of one wing. So we're hoping from the trail cam footage, we might get to confirm that. So he's 1994. The female he's with is from 1997. So again, quite getting on a bit in eagle years. We know he, he was originally paired with another female and they did breed. She then disappeared when this bird came in who had grey wing tags with the letter L. 
when Grey Ell appeared and the old the other female disappeared, since that day they have never bred. So we think there is a biological or behavioural issue with that female for whatever reason, we don't know. Sometimes it happens in nature. They seem to go through the process every year. They build a nest, they line it, they mate, there's courtship. But when I've watched them closely at the nest that they've chosen over the years, the behaviour just does not seem right. She looks like she's incubating. She'll be sitting low down in the nest for maybe 15, 20 minutes, and then she'll just get up and fly off. And he follows... And that's almost, that's the end of their breeding season. Normally they would sit on an egg for 38 days. It's a, it's a, it's a long haul. And then they raise their chicks for another 10 weeks. So it's amazing that she, he's stuck with her and, and she's still there. In fact, I found their, this year's nest on uh, a few days ago. And there they were carrying in nest material. And I keep every year, fingers crossed, thinking, could this be it? This, but we've been here so many times before that. I think until something happens to one of them, probably her, then they won't raise chicks, unfortunately. But in due course, because it's such a good habitat, lots of food and habitat around, it will always be a territory, I'm sure, even if they both disappear through old age, they'll be replaced. And so Glen Arras Estate will one day have a successful pair of white-tailed eagles. And I can't wait for that. Okay, and how, I think I already, you already touched upon this, but what is the lifespan of these white-tailed eagles? So the average lifespan really for white-tailed eagles is t- about 20 to 25. Okay, with, so yeah, they're both about very old. Yeah, we've, okay. we've had oh. one of the early pairs that nested here were into their early 30s before they wow. both appeared. So they can keep going and still be quite productive. It's normally the people often think it's the female that loses productivity, but actually she's quite likely or he is quite likely to be killed in some sort of territorial dispute with a new incoming male. And so it it keeps the productivity going. I I think 25 ish is a very good age for a white tailed eagle. Wow. Yeah, that's so interesting. I've never thought of them being territorial before. I don't know. Just I always imagine they're quite stately. They've got their their area, but of course there'll be tussles and. They are. They are not, I would say they're not as territorial as golden eagles. Golden eagles are feisty, patrolling their terrain, their territory all the time, and will certainly have big scuffles and will see off sea eagles uh, regularly. Wow. Sea eagles are much more sociable and easygoing, if that's the right word. They're, they're just, you know, you see these pictures of bald eagles in Alaska, hundreds of them sometimes, and they're very closely related to bald eagles. So you'll get gatherings of sea eagles of... 10, 15, 20 birds um, would not be uncommon in places like Norway, where there's obviously a lot more. But even here, we've had gatherings of 10 to 12 birds just sitting around, loafing about. Near their nest, they would see off an incomer or an intruder, but generally not as territorial as golden eagles, I'd say. Okay, so what has been one of your highlights as an RSPB officer on the Isle of Man, or some of your highlights? So probably the highlight for me in my career with RSPB and White Toad Eagles, um, I I was very lucky enough to be here way back in the mid 80s when the first pair of White Toad Eagles nested successfully. It was at a freshwater lock in in the middle of Mull and that first chick was raised. So that was the first chick in Britain for 70 plus years. And it was, yeah, that was a sort of a career lifetime highlight. But since then, I've been lucky enough to experience the growth of that population. And Mal has now got 22 pairs of white-tailed eagles. Um, and across Scotland, year by year, we're seeing them slowly reclaim their old haunts and old territories from where they were eradicated from and killed off a century plus ago. And there's now about 140, 150 pairs across Scotland, ranging really from Isla right up to Orkney. There's a pair in, on Hoy at the moment. So that's probably the highlight is seeing the success of the project and seeing them coming back to places that they should be and also seeing people enjoying them. The public coming to Mull and other islands, spending money in the local community and the local shops. And the trigger for their visit was because they wanted to see a white-tailed eagle soaring over Mull's hills and lochs. And that's what gets me out of bed in the morning. Amazing. Thank you. That's, that's, that's lovely. It sounds like an absolutely gorgeous job to have. <laughs> it just sounds so ideal. I haven't mentioned all the negatives, but we won't go into that. <laughs>